Sun Wu doesn't believe in being kind to people who are careless and decides to cut his group members' names from a presentation. His cruel act causes a senior to repeat his academic year. But the problem starts to arise when he keeps crossing paths with the senior, who is determined to make his life a living hell. While Sun Wu is deep in thought, their professor thanks Jae Young for helping his junior prepare the drama for the class presentation. Jae Young dismisses her thank you, saying that he needs to say sorry to her for dropping her course after applying to be her teaching assistant. The professor replies that he needs to use the opportunity he is getting, and she is sure that he will not be rejected. Jae Young is still doubtful about his acceptance, but the teacher assures him that there will be no problems. After the class ends, they go to the next class together, and as soon as Song Wu spots the empty corner chair, he rushes to sit on it, disappointed. Jae Young calls his senior and inquires about not putting his bag on the chair when he asks them to do this for two weeks. He's surprised to find that he didn't give them his bag, but soon realizes that he forgot to do that because of his hangover. He hangs up the phone after bidding goodbye to his senior and looks dejected as he says to Song Wu that he can't bother him today. Jae Young then says to his junior that he can't continue this class since he can't understand anything and just ends up laughing at the professor who looks like a penguin. Looks like making fun of your professors is a universal thing. He adds that Song Wu can finally relax in the class and asks if they are going to meet in the cafeteria for lunch. Song Wu just nods in reply and Jae Young asks if he is going to refuse his offer to treat him with something else. When Song Wu nods again, he pats his head, telling him to enjoy his food and then leaves the class. Gently rubbing his head, Song Wu is determined that he will tell his senior not to touch him next time because it makes him uncomfortable. When he finally focuses on the class again, he can't help but notice how the professor actually resembles a penguin. Jae Young is starting to rub off on him. Song Wu tries to focus on the class, but he feels strange, and it only makes him angry and confused when the feeling doesn't go away the rest of the day. While walking on the track, holding a can of black holic in his hand, he keeps thinking about how Jae Young keeping him from studying properly was his main issue, but that is not the case anymore. Even with his main problem gone, he is still not able to return to his normal life. Just then he receives a message on his phone, and he opens it to find that Jae Young has sent him the selfie he took earlier in the class. Their first couple photo is so cute, after staring at it for a moment, he puts his phone back in his pocket, not knowing how he should respond to that. He finally reaches the library and tries to study, but it doesn't work as he still feels enraged. He is thinking about going home early, since he is not getting anything done. Just then, Jae Young enters the scene and sits right beside him, but doesn't try to bother him. Jae Young silently starts focusing on his work, while Song Wu just sits there, shocked when he instantly starts to feel calm. He is suddenly able to focus on his work again, and all the pent-up emotions he was feeling have vanished. He is not happy when he realizes that he got used to his senior's presence, and his mind is all jumbled up because he was too focused on Jae Young. I can understand Song Wu perfectly. If someone as handsome as Jae Young spent a lot of time with me, I would also forget about everything else. Coming out of his thoughts, he looks to the side and finds Jae Young staring at him. At his confused expression, Jae Young says that his cap is tilted and raises his hand to fix it. Song Wu is amused at Jae Young for saying that, since he has grass in his hair, it makes him wonder if the other was lying on the ground like he did a few days ago. He slowly raises his hand and removes the grass from Jae Young's hair shocking his senior with his sudden, bold move. Once he calms down a little, Jae Young whispers that he wants to share something with him. Song Wu's heartbeat starts to increase as Jae Young leans extremely close to him and asks him to go to the movies with him. At the moment, Song Wu is so nervous and aroused that he can only think about the national anthem to calm himself. He recalls the conversation he had with a teacher in middle school about how to handle his adult desire and how it is taboo to talk about that in public. Without giving any reply to Jae Young, he runs away from there and goes into the bathroom. He splashes water on his face to calm himself down, not believing how he got aroused, without directly getting involved in any provoking activity. Jae Young enters the bathroom after a few minutes and looks very confused about Song Wu running away like that. Without giving him any reason for that, Song Wu just refuses to go to the movies with him. Jae Young is angry at his rejection and asks if Song Wu is refusing because he doesn't want to accompany Jae Young or just because he doesn't want to watch movies with another guy. Sam Wu replies that both the things he mentioned are the reasons for his rejection. His reply triggers Jae Young as he says that he just wants to thank Sang Wu 
for solving the issue on his laptop and it shouldn't be bad enough to make him run away like that. Sang Woo also starts to get angry as he says that spending time with Jae Young is already very difficult and he can't accept it as a payback for his work. Jae Young warns him to be careful of his words, but Sang Woo just continues that he doesn't need to get repaid for fixing the laptop. He says that he would prefer if Jae Young would start to bother him again as it is way better than his new weird behavior. Jae Young looks confused about what he is talking about, so Sang Woo explains that he is pointing to him whispering in his ear. Jae Young replies that he did it because they were in the library, but Sang Woo doesn't say anything in reply. Sang Woo returns to the library, and after quickly packing his bag, he runs out of there, still shocked by his body's odd reaction. That feels like an error to him. I love how Sang Woo thinks everything in coding language. It shows his love for his field. After finally reaching back home, he leans his back against his door, sighing heavily and thinking about how his body's reaction is normal for a male. But the main purpose of this is so humans can reproduce. He can't comprehend feeling such desire for another male as according to him. It goes completely against nature's rules. He flops down on his bed, frustrated with the fact that what he just considered a critical error is now affecting him physically. Every day, he keeps coming up with new nicknames for Jae Young. Sang Woo has no control over his body, and it makes him consider dropping out for a semester. He is worried that if he lets things continue the way they are right now, he might end up in a way worse situation than just graduating late. Looking at his mobile, he finds that it's almost time for his class, but he's planning to leave the class, worried that Jae Young will touch him again, and he will face the strange reaction of his body again. It's also nervous about the professor's opinion of him, since on the first day of class, he fell asleep with drawings on his face, and if he doesn't attend the class, it will make him look like a bad student. Thinking about it for a moment, he dismisses his worries, reminding himself that he is already planning to skip a semester. Meanwhile, Jae Young is furious at Sang Woo's actions, since he just wants to see what his junior looks like when he is concentrating on a movie. It looks like Sang Woo already has a hunch about his ulterior motives, because he is clearly not asking him out for movies just to repay him. He remembers the conversation they had earlier in the bathroom and grows more irritated, realizing that he gave his best, but it didn't work out well. He was sure that if he acted like a good guy, he would be able to get what he wanted, but he couldn't fool Song Woo. Furious at the situation, he just wants to disappear from Song Woo's life, since he hates him so much, but he also doesn't want to end things on a bad note. He finally decides to act indifferent when Song Woo comes and gives him the tickets so he can preserve some of his honor. He waits eagerly in the class, looking toward the door repeatedly, but San Wu doesn't show up. After the lecture ends, he walks out of the class, his mind still focused on his junior, who is obsessed with keeping full attendance, but skipped the class without any reason. He can't believe this happened, just because he invited the others to the movies, and he doesn't understand why San Wu hates him so much. On the other side, San Wu is sitting in front of his computer and submitting an application about taking a leave for a semester. The process went smoother than he expected, and now he just has to find out what will happen to his scholarship once he skips a semester. Earlier, his plan was to complete his graduation after the spring semester, and then land a job with an international game company, but now he can't achieve that. He reminds himself that it is fine, since he will be graduating just six months late, but he is more worried about not finishing his portfolio in time to apply to game companies. Sangwoo is still not completely hopeless, and is sure that if he finds a new graphic designer, he will be able to finish a demo game, even if he doesn't attend college for a semester. He comes out of his thoughts when someone starts knocking on his door loudly. Confused about who can be at the door, he takes a few steps forward, but comes to a sudden halt when he hears Jae Young shouting at him to open the door. He just stands there silently, while Jae Young keeps shouting that he knows Song Wu is inside the house and asks if he is not going to respond to him. He figures that Jae Young must have found his apartment number on his bike. When Jae Young again yells at him to open the door, he yells back, asking his senior leave or he will call the cops. Considering Sang Woo, I would not be surprised if he actually called the police. Jae Young keeps banging on his door loudly, asking him to open up, but Sang Woo refuses, saying that he is not bound to take orders from him. Jae Young seems dejected as he asks Sang Woo if he was so repulsed by the idea of them watching a movie together that he even skipped a class when he is the kind of person who will run to get the best seat, even when the world is ending. Finally giving up knocking, he leans his back against the door and says how Song Woo can avoid him like he is crazy, when he just wants them to watch a movie together. Poor Jae Young looks so sad. Song Woo, 
please accept his offer. He adds that Song Wu should just skip a semester, and for his reason for dropping out, he can write that a senior asked him to go to the movies. Only if Jae Young knew that, Song Wu was already planning to do so. Song Wu shouts at him to stop talking, saying that it is natural for him to freak out, because they are both men. Jae Young replies that it is not like old times, and he goes to movies regularly with his male friends. Song Wu responds that it is not the case for him, because he only goes to watch movies with the girl he is planning to marry. Jae Young slides the tickets from under the door, telling Song Wu to disappear from his life, and announces that he will make sure to not even glance his way from now on. Song Wu curses at him and asks him to leave, which only makes Jae Young more furious, as he curses at him in return, calling him a freak and warning him not to show his face again. They are already having a lover's spat. Song Wu is seething with anger, trying to act indifferent about what Jae Young said. He remembers how Jae Young said the same thing before, and he is not bothered, because he also feels the same way. He changes his shirt, thinking about how he has no reason to skip a semester. Since Jae Young is not going to bother him anymore, he starts riding his bicycle toward the college, determined to get his life back on track, and not let someone unimportant like Jae Young disturb his routine. He spent his day in a perfect routine, but he couldn't stop himself from blazing with anger all this time. After a tiring day, he finally lies on his bed, hoping to get some rest, but he keeps thinking about Jae Young and their last few interactions. Song Wu starts the third week of the semester with new determination, feeling like he got rid of some annoying bug. He does everything according to his schedule, going to his class at a predetermined time. While attending his mathematics class, he can't help but notice the professor, who resembles a penguin. During lunch, he forgets to bring a spoon for himself, but he doesn't let the minor mishap disturb his routine and goes to buy himself a coffee at the exact time. The sales girl informs him that they restocked his coffee, and he just thanks her, thinking about how he already has seven cans of that coffee at home. He goes to the library after taking a walk, eats his dinner, and then returns back home at half past six. He plays some games to pass the time, but he doesn't find them as entertaining as before. After spending some time coding, he goes to sleep at midnight. The next day, he is sitting in the lecture when the professor asks him to meet her after the class. He is not very bothered by the prospect of getting scolded by the teacher, which is a change from his old self, but compared to the recent events of his life, it doesn't feel strange to him. He follows the teacher's instructions and goes to her when the class ends. The professor asks him why he didn't attend the last class. Song Wu thinks about all that happened in the last week and how he planned to skip the semester, but he doesn't say anything, and instead just apologizes to the professor. She then asks him about Jae Young, to which Song Wu replies that he might drop this course. When the professor further says that she has high hopes for him, Song Wu is surprised that she even knows his name. How can someone not know an intelligent and equally handsome student? The professor smiles at his confusion and replies that every professor in the department knows him. She adds that she was a little disappointed with his careless attitude during the first weeks of the new semester, but she still thinks that he has a chance to boost his grade. San Wu acknowledges her advice and then walks out of the class. Outside the building, he spots Jae Young standing with his friends, and his heart starts to beat faster at the prospect that he is able to recognize his senior from a distance. He is wondering if it is Jae Young's style, his height, his amazing figure, or his beautiful smile that made him remember his senior like that. At least he is aware of the insanely good looks of our Jae Young. Turning away from Jae Young, he looks at his mobile and opens the selfie he received the other day. He stares at it in silence for a moment, and then zooms in on Jae Young's face. He stares at Jae Young's face for a moment, not happy with how unclear the picture is. Later at home, he searches for Jae Young's social media and finds their selfie posted on it. He developed the stalker's skill, but still thinks that he hates his senior. He saves the pictures, and then continues scrolling through the feed, commenting on how Jae Young is posing in a picture. He finds a picture of his senior with a girl and can't help but notice the fake smile. The next picture has a caption about how he stayed up all night, but Song Wu is sure that it is a lie. In another picture of Jae Young, he comments that he is an attention seeker and looks stupid in his picture. He keeps insulting the picture, but suddenly becomes speechless when he finds a picture of Jae Young dressed as a perfect gentleman with gel in his hair and his eyes closed. Jae Young looks like a model in the picture. I can totally understand why Song Wu stopped his insults. The sudden feeling of excitement reminds him of how he felt the same when he first looked at a toy excavator, and his first thought was that he wanted it. He continues stalking Jae Young's social media and only comes out of his trance when he hears the bird chirping from outside. 
He is surprised that it is already morning, but he gets more shocked when he looks back at his computer and finds different sorted folders of Jay Young's pictures. He is very organized even when he is crushing on someone. He is startled by his own actions and can't believe the effect Jay Young has on his life. Twelve days have passed since his fight with Jay Young, and the feelings of anxiety and irritation that he felt in the first few days turn into anger and depression by the twelfth day. He figures that the emotions he was feeling at first were because of Jay Young, and when he left, they also disappeared. But the depression was the result of Jay Young's absence, and it only increased with time. After carefully examining the cause of his problems and why he feels uncomfortable, he figures that it is because Jay Young is no longer with him. Once he finds the root of his problems, he is determined to bring Jay Young back into his life. The good thing is that he doesn't deny his feelings unnecessarily and is so quick to find a solution. The next day in school, he goes for lunch with Ji Hei and says that he wants to treat her to dinner today. Ji Hei smiles brightly at his offers as Song Wu adds that they will meet at Olive Tree by 6 p.m. if she decides to go with him. Ji Hei is happy at the fact that Song Wu remembers where they had dinner together for the first time. Her excitement only makes Song Wu confused, who is wondering if she has no money. He is so intelligent, but so oblivious at the same time. Ji Hei looks worried as she mentions that the restaurant is very expensive. Song Wu coldly responds that he knows that and asks her if she wants to join him or not. Ji Hei quickly says that she will go, and Song Wu hands his phone over to her, asking her to share her phone number so they can contact each other if there is any change of plans. After entering her number, she gives the phone back to Song Wu, who asks for her last name again. Ji Hei tells him her name and asks if he even knows her first name. She is happy when he says her name correctly, since she didn't think he would remember it. Meanwhile, Jae Young is staring at Song Wu's picture, thinking about how it is very easy to make juniors fall in love with you since they simply get happy with good food. Song Wu is the only one who is not affected by this method and eats without any care in the world. They don't have anything in common, which only makes him confused about his attraction toward his junior. Jae Young observed how Song Wu is cold and rude toward people, but if someone asks him any questions, he explains the answer in detail. He takes every assignment very seriously, and even though he is not good at speaking Chinese, he is still adorable. While sitting in front of his computer, Jae Young is thinking about how Song Wu has the strange ability to attract people toward him. Wearing black clothes on his pale skin and being slightly OCD makes him look like a dark Bambi who is just happy with grazing in a post-apocalyptic world. Jae Young regrets not leaving Song Wu when he first finds him attractive, but when he removes his cap and gets a glimpse of his face, it only makes him more intrigued by him. He wants to slowly remove the clothes from Song Wu's body and find out if he has lean shoulders. Jae Young agrees with Song Wu, calling him stupid because when he became aware of his attraction towards his junior, he started to act like a good senior. He is fully aware of the fact that there are a lot of hurdles to dating Song Wu. The first reason is that his graduation is soon, and there is a high chance that he will get accepted into a graduate school. The other reason is that Song Wu is a male. Even though he had intimate relationships with men in the past, he never wanted to get into a relationship with one. Furthermore, he is unsure of what it would be like if he actually dated Song Wu, who panics at just the idea of watching movies with another guy. He tried to act like a nice senior, but it had the opposite effect, and now he is completely disconnected from Song Wu. While going to his part time job, Jae Young keeps thinking about Song Wu and hopes that his feelings will disappear with time. His hopes are instantly crushed. When he spots Song Wu sitting at a table and directly staring at him. I thought Jae Young was going to be more confident in this relationship, but it looks like Song Wu has taken that spot. Jae Young rushes back into the kitchen and slumps against a cabinet. He can't believe that Song Wu decided to show up here when he told him to make sure that they don't cross paths in the future. Jae Young assures himself that Song Wu is not here for any hidden agenda, as he is the type to forget everything as soon as he doesn't need it anymore. He is not even sure of Song Wu. He even remembers that this is his workplace. His thoughts start to wander toward the couple sitting there, and according to him, they might be holding hands when they come here the next time. They might sleep together after that, and it won't be long before he gets a wedding invitation. It is funny how quick he is to imagine them getting married whenever he sees them together. Disturbed by his own thoughts, he tells his co-worker that he is going to take a break and walks out of the restaurant. Meanwhile, Song Wu is looking around the place, completely ignoring how Ji Hei is asking him if he likes seafood. It's just trying to find Jae Young, and is confused when Ji Hei keeps talking about his taste in food. 
Sangwoo finally spots Jae Young, who is walking out of the restaurant, but since he is still wearing an apron, Sangwoo wonders if he is going out for some work. His heart drops when he realizes that Jae Young might be avoiding him. Just then, the waitress brings them their food, and Sangwoo is surprised that he ordered seafood, even though he doesn't like it much. He starts eating food quickly, and when Jihae asks if the food is good, he truthfully replies that it is not good. After taking a few more bites, he stands up from his chair, not being able to suppress his feelings anymore. Jihae is confused and asks him where he is going. Sangwoo replies that he will be back soon. But when Jihae asks if he is going to ditch her again, he leaves his wallet on the table. Sangwoo walks out of the hall, carefully looking around for any signs of Jae Young. When he steps out of the restaurant, he finally hears his senior's voice and looks around to find him talking on the phone. He silently listens to the conversation, until Jae Young turns around and looks at him. He just stands there, as Jae Young doesn't hang up the phone, instead saying that it is okay to talk right now, since he is not busy. Please don't break out Song Wu's heart like that. Song Wu waits for a few moments, but his patience soon runs out as he asks Jae Young to hang up the phone, saying that he wants to discuss something important. His behavior confuses Jae Young, who is wondering if Song Wu is trying to pick up a fight, but he still hangs up the phone. He is not sure what his junior wants, but considering his behavior, he worries that Song Wu might ask for compensation for the psychological damage he suffered. He keeps his voice cold as he asks Song Wu what he wants to talk about. He is completely shocked when Song Wu addresses him as He Young and says that he wants to talk to him. Jae Young looks so cute, blushing just because Jae Young called him He Young. He is already so whipped. Jae Young remembers all the times he got scolded by Song Wu for referring to himself as He Young. Ignoring his reaction, Song Wu continues his conversation, asking Jae Young to work on the game with him since he needs a good designer. Jae Young is still not sure if he is hearing things right, as Song Wu adds that he will work hard and earn money that he can use to study abroad. He says that the game will be a good addition to Jae Young's portfolio, and he will give him a free hand so he can try anything he wants. Jae Young finally finds his words as he tells Song Wu to wait for a moment and asks him to repeat what he said. Song Wu replies that he was talking about meeting a designer, but Jae Young asks him to repeat what he called him. Song Wu replies that he just said his name, but Jae Young is not fooled, as he asks his junior if he really addressed him as He Young. Looking nervous, Song Wu replies that it was just a slip of the tongue, but his behavior only confuses Jae Young, who is used to getting dirty looks from his junior, who is now trying to recruit him as a graphic designer for his game. Song Wu takes a defensive stance as he asks Jae Young why he can't call him He Young when everyone else on campus does. Jae Young replies that he can't do that, but doesn't mention that it is because his heart rate goes crazy at hearing that. Song Wu was ready to retract his offer, while Jae Young is trying to understand the situation. Jae Young knows that Song Wu only worries about efficiency, and now that he needs him, he easily forgets that they are fighting. In this scenario, it looks like Song Wu doesn't hold grudges, but he's not the same since the last two weeks were very hard on him, and he doesn't want to feel like that again. He wants to turn down his junior, but when he speaks, all thoughts vanish from his head, and he instead asks if Song Wu will be able to complete the game before the end of the semester. Song Wu looks happy as he replies that he is aware of Jae Young's plan to study abroad, but if he gets the four months, including the break, he will finish the game at any cost. Jae Young replies that it is still not enough time to complete a game, since Song Wu has to take care of his studies too. Song Wu still doesn't back down as he replies that he will use a game engine more often, instead of coding manually, and he doesn't have a lot of classes to attend. Song Wu came on a mission and is going to make sure nothing comes his way. Jae Young is surprised by how stubborn and blunt Song Wu can be. Staring at Song Wu, he realizes that he doesn't care about any benefits that come with game development and that working on the game is just a good excuse to spend more time with Song Wu. He agrees to work on the game with Song Wu, who smiles brightly at his agreement and then leaves, saying that he will reach out to him later. Jae Young's heart rate goes crazy when Song Wu again addresses him as He Young, and he slumps back against the wall, not believing that he got turned on by a simple world. This makes him realize the intensity of the situation and how he is completely doomed. We already know that he is head over heels for Song Wu. Later, Jae Young goes to play billiards with his friend and tells him about his deal with Song Wu and how he thinks it is impossible to develop a game in such a short time. His friend replies that it depends on how good someone is at work. Jae Young tells him that Song Wu said he is efficient at coding, 
and he thinks there will be millions of wins in the show. His friend chuckles to hear that, and says that Jay Young has been fooled, because it is impossible to achieve that. Just then, Jay Young's phone rings, and he looks at it to find a message from Song Wu, reminding him that it is time for the delivery, but Jay Young still doesn't send him any email. The message reminds him of his and Song Wu's meeting about the project a few days ago. In the meeting, Song Wu says that if they are going to work on this together, he has two conditions. The first one is that he doesn't want to extend the deadlines or delay any meetings. The second is that Jay Young is not allowed to do anything without consulting him first, and if he doesn't want to accept any of these, he should leave the project now. Jay Young just stares at him in surprise, not believing he is the same person who very politely asked him to work on the game yesterday. He felt like Song Wu's eyes were sparkling, but now he is wondering if it was just his imagination. When he doesn't say anything for the next few moments, Song Wu figures that he has no objections. He starts to arrange his file as Jay Young keeps staring at him, thinking about where his positive personality has disappeared. He comes out his thoughts when Song Wu passes him a fully organized timetable labeled as a game construction program. The timetable perfectly reflects Song Wu's personality, but I can tell Jay Young is going to have a hard time. After taking a look at the timetable, he realizes that his junior is very determined to finish the game in four months. Jay Young voices his concerns, saying that this is very hectic, especially Song Wu's part. His concerns are quickly dismissed by Song Wu, who replies that he has no issues with his part and asks him if there is any issue with designing the program. Jay Young is still in shock at how Song Wu targeted himself to complete three drafts per day, and it only makes him think that the other is a robot. Taking his silence as agreement, Song Wu continues that the earning ratio will be one to four, with them having four parts. Jay Young needs to speak quickly if he really wants to refuse something. To Jay Young, all of this is an excuse to see Song Wu. So he just says how his junior is an awful employer. Song Wu ignores him and continues that they had already discussed everything about the game. So Jay Young should have worked on some designs instead of bullying him. Jay Young responds by telling him to not mention that again, and inquires about what money he is talking about since they don't know when they will finish developing the game. Confused Song Wu asks what should he do then, and Jay Young advises him to rebuild the plan. When Song Wu asks him what will he do in the situation, Jay Young replies that he would extend the program for a long time, since he doesn't understand how they are going to follow this timetable. Song Wu agrees with his suggestion and asks him to come up with a plan until their next meeting. Since Jay Yum is also taking part in planning, he agrees to make their profit ratio equal. Jay Yum is surprised by all this, but Song Wu doesn't give him any chance to object as he wishes him good luck with editing and says that if Jay Yum doesn't show up at the next meeting, he will continue with the current plan. If Song Wu were my professor, I would be crying every day, but would still attend class just to look at his beautiful face. He tells Jay Young to send him data at midnight, before the meeting day, which only shocks the other, as he realizes that the next meeting is tomorrow, and he has only seven hours to finish the task. Devastated, he calls his junior a bully, but Song Wu just calmly replies that he has a tight schedule and can't spend a lot of time on planning. He then stands up from the chair, once again surprising Jay Young, who asks him if he is already leaving. Song Wu replies that there is a reason for him to leave early, which makes Jay Young wonder, if he has a job besides developing the game. Song Wu refuses to tell him the reason, and instead asks him to avoid touching him unannounced, as it makes him feel uncomfortable. Jae Young is flustered at being caught like that, as Song Wu continues that he should especially avoid patting his head, grabbing his wrist, and whispering to him. Song Wu leaves after that, while Jae Young just chuckles evilly, not having any intention to refrain from physical contact. Back at the billiard club, he takes a shot, while thinking about how he can't believe he developed feelings for a crazy guy, just because he called him He-Young. We all know Jay Young didn't stand a chance against Song Wu from the first day. Just then, his phone starts ringing as he receives a call from Song Wu. Already knowing that it is about the deadline, he picks up the call casually, asking the other what he wants. I'm sure we all have that one group partner who acts like this. Song Wu replies that it is already midnight and he still hasn't received any email. So he called, he asks Jay Young if he has any particular reason for missing the deadline. Jay Young wants to say that he didn't send the email because he didn't want to, but instead, he replies that he is a little busy. Song Wu calmly replies that he can hear the sound of a billiard ball in the background. Jay Young is frustrated at getting caught like that and quickly says that he will send the email by tomorrow. Song Wu warns him to not miss the deadline again, and Jay Young quickly hangs up the phone. 
Ethan turns toward his friends and says that he will pay for this, but he has to leave now. His friend is not happy with his sudden leave, but Jay Young just ignores his protest. He then leaves after that and messages his friend So Young, telling her that he left the club and is going to work now. She laughs at his condition and asks when are they going to get drinks. Jay Young instead asks her, why doesn't she let him go away? So Young replies that the developer told her to stop being stubborn, and she followed his words and left after they agreed on a proper sum, but she had a good experience with him. Jay Young stops chatting with her and goes to work on the project, but he is not sure if he will be able to fix the plan, since there is not enough time to create a new concept. He starts sketching on the paper, while thinking about whether Song Wu really believes that the design can be made in one day. He suddenly recalls how Song Wu asked him not to make any physical contact, but the only thing he can focus on is how beautiful his junior is. Sometimes, he freaks out because of Song Wu's personality, and even though he doesn't want to meet him, he still misses him. During your next meeting, Song Wu says to him that he considers him a creative person, but after looking at his design, he is a bit upset. Song Wu is not returning his love and is instead giving him academic stress. He adds that Jae Young only made changes to the character, while the title and plan are still the same, which doesn't fit the concept. Jae Young listens to him silently as he continues that the game is for children and their potential customers are young parents who will not let their children play this game. Jae Young finally replies that this is the best he can do in a day. Song Wu calmly says that he expected something better since Jae Young is his senior and then adds that he will continue with the original plan. Jae Young is offended by his statement and says that he will do it again from the start. His enthusiastic statement does not affect Song Wu, who says that they don't have any more time to waste. Jae Young doesn't back down and says that he will complete it until the next meeting. After recalling that today is Monday, he looks at the time dibble and is annoyed to see that Song Wu has arranged meetings five times a week, only leaving the weekend free. It also bothers him that Song Wu doesn't have any trust in him and wants to check on him every day. Song Wu finally agrees with his suggestion, and Yu gives him time until the weekend, advising him to send the project by Sunday midnight. Jae Young replies that he is not going to deliver it by the deadline, so Song Wu shouldn't push him. When Song Wu questions him about it, he replies that he is different from that, as sometimes things don't work out, but he will make sure to complete the plan before the deadline. Song Wu just comments that it is like an explosion that will explode at any unexpected time. Jae Young says that if Song Wu's style is not much different, he doesn't deserve to lead the project as no matter how important a task is, he never misses a deadline. In reply to his statement, Song Wu asks him how important this project is to him. Jae Young says that it depends on what his junior does, but Song Wu is not happy with his answer and comments that his statements are all ambiguous. Song Wu then packs his bag and stands up to leave, saying that they will meet at the next meeting. Jae Young asks him if he is going to leave already, and when Song Wu replies with a simple yes, he again asks him for his reason to leave. Song Wu says that he already knows the reason and then walks out of there, while Jae Young just sits there, thinking about how Song Wu must be disappointed to get stuck with him on the project. He is contemplating leaving the project as it is hurting his pride, but he can't stop thinking about how Song Wu will react if he brings him a great piece of art. He imagines Song Wu's excited face when he thanks him, and this motivates him enough to not leave the project. He is the prime example of how delusion makes us do weird things. Jae Young later goes to his workstation, surprising his friends with his sudden arrival. He tells his friend that he has something to work on and asks him about Choi Yuna. He goes to sit on his chair as his friends tell him that she doesn't know about Yuna, but she was here earlier. Jae Young doesn't say anything further and instead starts to take a look at the game plan San Wu provided him with. He is annoyed at how San Wu doesn't just give him the full thing. Even if the format is good, he then starts to go through the game's script and finds that it revolves around the story of a giant farm, where a meteorite suddenly falls and affects the animals and vegetables there. A scientist who is determined to win a Nobel Prize in biology approaches the affected farm for some research. The game already looks so fun. Before Jae Young can read anything else, his friend points out how his phone is constantly ringing. He already has an idea that it would be Yuna, so he asks his friend to tell her that he is busy and can't go with her. His friend Sung Jin picks up the call, while Jae Young returns his attention to the drawing. In the background, Sung Jin tells Yuna that he has no idea why Jae Young is refusing to go, and then asks her to curse at him directly. He then hangs up the call, and informs Jae Young that Yuna is furious with him. Sung Jin then looks at his drawings, and is impressed by how good they look, which makes him curious about what his friend is making. Jae Young replies that it is for his study abroad, 
while smugly thinking about how he doesn't miss any deadlines, just like he said. This time he is confident that his junior will praise him for his work. In their next meeting, Song Wu stays silent for a moment after looking at his drawing and then comments on how Jae Young also knows English. He takes a look at how the title of the game has been turned into Vegetable Venturer, replacing the earlier title, Vegetable Man. Jae Young is not bothered by his keen observation, and after taking another look at the sketches, a smile finally appears on Song Wu's face. He says that one of the characters resembles Jae Young a lot, but his statement only makes others curious, since none of the characters are positive, and he doesn't know which one he is being compared to. Song Wu has moved his step forward from giving him nicknames and is now even comparing him to evil cartoon characters. He asks Song Wu about it, but doesn't get any answer. His junior finally raises his head and praises his work with a smile. All other thoughts vanish from Jae Young's head, as he is only focused on his junior's charming smiles. His cheeks blush slightly, thinking about how he finally managed to hear some good words from Song Wu. He comes out of his thoughts when Song Wu says that he will choose character number three. Jae Young is not happy with the choice of character, since he put all this focus on character number one and even spent an hour coloring it. Character number three that Jae Young designed is a man with curly hair and a beautiful face. I think we all know why Song Wu decided to choose this character. Song Wu points at the character and asks Jae Young if it represents him. Jae Young replies that he likes the first character more, not understanding if Song Wu is messing with him or not. When Song Wu doesn't give up on his choice, Jae Young says that he wants to choose that character because a scientist is more suitable to go on such missions than any other person. Song Wu replies that what he is saying is right, but he still doesn't want to go with character number one. A little irritated, Jae Young asks for his reason for choosing that character and gets that comprehensive judgment. He still doesn't understand why Song Wu is insistent on choosing that character and makes another attempt to change his mind. But when Song Wu doesn't back down, he agrees with his choice. Jae Young remembers Song Wu's shining face from earlier and reminds himself that he already achieved what he wanted, so he's going to leave the project. Song Wu continues the conversation as he praises Jae Young for his hard work and reminds him to carefully read the email he's going to send him today. Song Wu then suddenly asks him to come closer, and when Jae Young asks him for the reason, he replies that he is telling Jae Young in advance that he's going to pat his head for the good work he did. I don't know about Jae Young, but butterflies are dancing in my stomach at Song Wu's actions. Jae Young just sits there, surprised as Song Wu slowly raises his hand and pats his head. Song Wu quickly walks out of the place after rubbing his head a little while Jae Young is trying his best to contain his shock. His heart starts to beat faster as he tries to understand what just happened. Later, he walks outside, still feeling a little flustered, but it just makes him think about how Song Wu is very amusing. He still can't believe that his junior made such an effort to praise him, even if it was completely opposite of his personality. It makes him wonder if Song Wu did it just because he likes this kind of thing. He smiles at the thought, quickly dismissing his plan to quit game production. When he goes back to his workstation again, he gets scolded by Yuna, who calls him out for canceling their plan at the last moment when he was so excited about it. She sits back in her chair and tells him how the concert was crazy and that Yoon received a signed CD. Jae Young replies that he is happy to hear that she enjoyed her event. Yuna continues to say that he was the one who missed out and asks him why he didn't show up. Jae Young informs her that he had to finish some tasks and he still has some work to complete so she shouldn't disturb him. Yuna is shocked to hear his words but he just ignores her and goes to his desk. He is surprised to see Seon Jin packing his stuff and asks him why he is doing that. Seon Jin informs him that he is joining the military, which only makes Jae Young more confused, so he explains that he didn't get into college. Jae Young finally understands the situation, as Yuna and Seon Jin are from the same department, and the situation will be a little awkward. Seon Jin continues to say that he feels like giving up on life, so he is taking the leave to join the military. Yuna comes forward to comfort him and tells him to come back quickly after finishing his duty. Leaving Yuna to deal with the crying Seong Jin, Jae Young returns to his work. He can't believe that he is paying this much attention to the work, and it makes him feel like he is turning into Song Wu. He continues working on the project until Yuna says that she is heading home soon and asks him if he will stay here. Jae Young asks her the time, to which she replies that it is almost midnight. Yuna continues that he seems to be working hard on something. And if it is a good project, he should let her in too. He tells her that it is a mobile game, and when Yuna asks if it is interesting, he replies that it is normal. Just then he receives a reminder message from Song Wu, 
and it makes him happy for the first time as he has a lot of data to send over. He attaches all the documents by email, but instead of simply sending the email, he decides to wait for a bit. He moved past bullying his junior, but it seems he still likes to mess with him. After a few minutes, his phone started ringing, just like he had expected. He chuckles at the situation, and then picks up the phone, casually asking Song Wu why he is calling him. Song Wu replies that the deadline is already over, but he still hasn't received any emails. With a big smile on his face, Jae Young replies that it completely slipped out of his mind, and he will send it instantly. Continuing the conversation, Jae Young asks Song Wu if he has already eaten his dinner and what he has. Song Wu replies that he already had his dinner and ate his cafeteria food. Jae Young continues the conversation as he asks Song Wu about the menu of the cafeteria. After describing the menu, Song Wu asks why he wants to know all that and is surprised when Jae Young replies that it is because he likes hearing his voice. He adds that he likes to hear other people's voices. Song Wu comments on how he is very strange and then hangs up the phone. Yuna finally speaks as she calls out Jae Young for his cringy talk, but he ignores her and instead focuses on how. If Song Wu has any interest in him, he would give a different reply and not end the call like that. Yuna again asks him why he is talking in that voice, saying how it makes her nauseous. Instead of replying to her comments, Jae Young just tells her to stay out of his business. Jae Young is unaware of how Song Wu feels, but he completely knows the condition of his own heart. At this moment, his feelings can be classified as an early stage of love, where there is only the joy of something new with no duties, which makes this time most fun. Even if his feelings turn into something complicated or dangerous, he is all right, as long as he doesn't cross a certain line. Jae Young is confident that he will be able to respect this imaginary line, since he never loses control when it comes to his feelings. During their next meeting, San Wu tells him that he went through all the files he received, and even though he is satisfied with the overall progress, he still wants to point out some mistakes. He then points to the hair of the character, and shows a broken pixel to Jae Young, who is not happy with his objection, since he doesn't think anyone will notice something so small. Sang Wu replies that these little things together will lead to a perfect result, and tells Jae Young to be careful about it. He then points to two different objects, and tells Jae Young that he needs to give them the same shade. Jae Young just sighed heavily, as Sang Wu continued that he clearly mentioned in the guidelines how to name any file he would receive, but Jae Young didn't use an underscore and wrote all the numbers in single digits. He advises Jae Young to add zero in front of numbers from now on, and to also make sure to only write in lowercase letters. Jae Young listens silently, as Sang Wu says that the design shouldn't be like this, as it was created by someone who already works as a web designer. He adds that this time, he will help Jae Young fix the mistakes, but he has to make sure that he doesn't repeat the same mistakes in the future. Jae Young can't believe that Sang Wu focuses on such minor details, which is completely opposite to his own style. He knows that he can't create a lot of files in one day without making any mistakes. He curses Song Wu, calling him a heartless person, but the other just ignores his words and starts packing his bag. In life, we just need to be as unbothered as Song Wu. Jae Young is not happy with him leaving like that and strikes up a conversation about his studies, just wanting to stretch the time a little bit more. Song Wu replies that he is studying well and even worked a little before coming here. Jae Young comments on how he has some special powers in reply, to which Song Wu says that recently he has been doing well, so it also helped him study better. Jae Young smiles at that and says that all of this must be happening because he stopped bothering Song Wu, and for that, he should be thankful. Song Wu coldly replies that it is not because of that, and when Jae Young asks him to share the reason, he refuses to tell him anything. Jae Young asks if this is his new favorite line to say, and then grabs a strip of his bag, not wanting to let him go like this. He quickly says that, since there are a few mistakes he needs to fix, he's having trouble understanding some of the things. He suggests that Song Wu take a look at it, and then advise him according to that. Song Wu seems irritated, as he asks Jae Young if he is still confused even after listening to him. Jae Young replies that he just wants to be sure, and then invites Song Wu to visit the art department and observe his work. He adds that they can also have a cup of tea together, as Song Wu just said that he has finished studying. Song Wu seems intrigued by the idea and replies that he was already thinking about visiting Jae Young's workplace, since he has a feeling that his senior's work environment is not comfortable, and they have to make it better to ensure the quality of their work. Jae Young quickly says that he was talking about the same thing, but he doesn't show his excitement about Song Wu falling for his trap. When Jae Young stands up to leave, Song Wu protests that he is not ready to visit the place right away. His words are ignored by Jae Young, 
who starts dragging him by his arm, saying that it is a short visit that doesn't need him to prepare in advance. They soon reach Jae Young's work studio, and Song Woo takes slow steps inside, hesitant to be in a new place. Yuna is blasting the music in the studio, which makes Jae Young realize that she might not get along with Song Woo. He loudly asks her to look their way, but she just asks him why, still completely immersed in her music. Meanwhile, Song Woo is exasperated to see the state of this place. Even if he was already expecting this, he still can't believe that someone can work in a place like this. Jae Young pulls out a chair for him and tells him to not pay any attention to Yuna. According to Song Woo, Yuna looks like she has multiple mental disorders and shares traits with some of the most evil characters present on Earth, which just increases his disbelief about how messy this place is. He replies to Jae Young that he is very uncomfortable, so there is no way that he can feel at ease. Yuna finally turns around and asks Jae Young about their guest. He replies that Song Woo is his junior and they are working on a project together. He tells her to go back to her work, but she instead approaches them and starts questioning him about Song Wu's identity. Jae Young tells her his name and that he is a computer science major. He adds that Yuna shouldn't be offended by his expressions, and it is just his welcoming look. Yuna laughs loudly at that and comments on how Song Wu's name sounds similar to Lettuce. Song Wu silently listens to their conversation, thinking about how if he didn't like Jae Young's drawing, he would never associate with such people, even in worse conditions. Jae Young finally turns to him and goes to turn on the computer, saying that they should start working, but Song Wu stops him from doing so. He tells Jae Young to first pick up his socks and clean the place. Jae Young silently obeys, as Song Wu orders him to ventilate the room and organize his books, and after he finishes doing that, he finally gets permission to turn on his computer. Once the computer screen lights up, instead of going straight to work, Song Wu asks him to organize his desktop first. Jae Young's patience is really being tested. Annoyed, Jae Young asks if it is necessary to do this now, to which Song Wu replies that it irritates him to look at the screen like this and advises him to always stay organized from now on. Song Wu's attention is suddenly turned toward the loud music, and he turns around without hesitation, telling Yuna not to play such loud music since she's not alone in the room. Yuna looks at him confused, and he adds that she has a perfectly fine headphone lying on her desk, so she should use it before she can say something in return. Jae Young rushes toward her seat and puts the headphones on her. Jae Young is just making sure that nothing spoils his wifey's mood. Song Wu finally permits to launch the game and silently watches as Jae Young shows him the graphic. His silence is surprising to Jae Young, who expected to get instructions at every moment. He glances at Song Wu and is surprised to see him already looking at him. Song Wu quickly turns away, but Jae Young keeps staring at him and notices a mole on his shoulder. The glimpse of the mole makes him want to bite Sam Wu when he is not wearing any clothes, but he quickly dismisses his thoughts, already knowing how dangerous it can be. He is sure that if this actually happens, Sam Wu might sue him for that, and there will be news about him on television the next day. I love how he always imagines the extremely worst situation. Sam Wu again starts staring at him, and this time Jae Young questions him about it. Sam Wu replies that he wanted to pick a good designer, and even though he is against Jae Young's living style, he can't deny his skills. Jae Young blushes at the compliments and is surprised by how different it feels. Even though this is not the first time, he has been praised for his work. Right now they are working on a project, but to him, it feels like they are here for a picnic date. Jae Young's happiness doesn't last long because his worst days start the next day. He was shocked when Song Wu announced that he was going to work at this place from now on. Seeing his confusion, Song Wu says that it will be more efficient this way, but Jae Young still has a bad feeling about this. Soon they start their work, and Jae Young starts to get unlimited scolding from his junior. San Wu tells him to increase his speed to match his, so they can get more things done, and he says that he doesn't look like a professional with his current attitude. Jae Young mockingly addresses him as his majesty, and says that he will fully obey his orders. San Wu next scolds him for continuously shaking his leg, but Jae Young just calmly says that he needs to follow the words of his boss. His performance still doesn't satisfy San Wu who says that he already gave him enough time to think about this, and if he can't handle it, he should have never joined the project. Jae Young argues that he only had two days, and that it is impossible to get something done in such a short time. After working tirelessly, when Jae Young yawns, he gets scolded by Song Wu, who asks him how can he feel sleepy when there is so much work left. Jae Young replies that it happened, because he is working on so many things simultaneously, but Song Wu just tells him to hurry up, not believing his excuse. Jae Young says that Song Wu is like a gangster, 
even though he doesn't have any weapons with him. Yuna just silently listens to their bickering, and finally leaves after some time. Jae Young sighs tiredly, feeling like an overworked mine worker, and decides to take a 15 minute break. Sang Woon doesn't scold him this time, but his sour expressions stay at all. Jae Young is really annoyed this time, as he doesn't understand why his junior still has those expressions when he fixed all the mistakes. He recalls how his friends reacted when he left early from the basketball match dinner party, just so he could work on the project. Jae Young tries to convince Song Woo to take a break, but the other refuses, saying that he has a lot of work to do. Jae Young replies that he is aware of the pending work, and he is just telling you to rest for a bit. Jae Young then opens his mobile and plays a song, recalling how he has never listened to anything particular, ever since Song Woo came here. The song starts to play loudly, and Jae Young is surprised that Song Woo doesn't object to it. Striking a conversation, he says that it looks like he likes the song. Song Woo replies that he doesn't like it, as it is a very mediocre song. Jae Young tries to tell him the name of the band, but Song Woo interrupts him, completing the name on his own. Jae Young makes another attempt, this time introducing the song, but Song Woo again beats him to it, mentioning how the song is called Magnetic Field, and it is on the band's fifth album, so Jae Young should stay quiet now. Jae Young is speechless due to the shock, as Song Woo said that he doesn't like the song, but he still remembers every single detail of the song. He plays another song, wanting to test his junior's knowledge, and to his surprise, Song Woo not only tells him the name of the song, he also explains how it is about taking over a company, after cutting the boss. Jae Young quickly sits up, surprised at their shared music taste, and plays another song. When Song Woo shares the information again without hesitating, it makes him wonder if his junior is a music app. When he shares, he gets goosebumps, knowing that they like the same kind of music. Song Woo says that it is not the case, so Jae Young shouldn't get excited. His words have no effect, as his senior is not fooled by his rude act, and wants to know how much the other listens to these songs to remember every detail like that. While trying to play another song, Jae Young accidentally clicks on something else, and it is the first time Song Woo doesn't recognize the song. He slowly lies back down, surprised at how Song Woo doesn't know this popular song. After a while, Song Woo calls, pointing to the missing part of a grenade and asking him to fix it. He tells him to take a look at the corn as well, and then reminds him that his 15 minute break has passed, so if he should return to work. Jae Young is furious with him, but instead of arguing, he silently follows his instructions and returns to his chair. He takes a look at Song Woo, thinking about how cute he is, but at the same time, he is not. He keeps staring at his junior for some moments, and then asks him why he decided to develop a game. He keeps thinking about how Song Woo is good at coding, but he has no sense in regards to graphics design. Their working habits and collaboration don't fit, and it is also a hassle that this game requires a lot more attention toward its design and planning. Song Woo finally replies to his question, saying that he likes game development, and that he wants to work at a famous game company. He explains that when he was 15 years old, he tried playing the company's newly released game, and he found it so interesting that he continued playing all night. After that, his dream changed, and he wanted to make a game on the same concept, so he started focusing on English and gaming. Jae Young is amazed to hear this, as he always thought that Song Woo was different from everyone else, and didn't expect him to have hobbies or favorites. He looks at the shining eyes of Song Wu and realizes how he is seeing such bright eyes for the first time. He is surprised to know that Song Wu is not just a robot who only focuses on work, but also a person who enjoys listening to music and dreams to achieve something. When Jae Young doesn't say anything, Song Wu assumes that he is talking about something else, but Jae Young quickly says that he sounds so amazing right now. He then asks Song Wu what the game was that he played and finds out that he is talking about an old, popular game. Jae Young reminds himself to never play that game if he ever takes Song Woo to an internet cafe. He then asks Song Woo what he wants to become, before choosing gaming development as a career. He is shocked when Song Woo replies that he wants to become a fork crane driver. Child Song Woo is so cute, with his innocent face and dreams. Song Woo then says that he is planning to join the gaming company by the second half of next year, but it depends on how successful their game is going to be. Jae Young reminds him that he said that the game would make his portfolio amazing, but it looks like he was making his own profile instead. Song Woo replies that it will benefit both of them, and Jae Young is amazed by how confident he is. Even though they have a difficult schedule, Song Woo already seems sure of the success. Instead of being reckless about the situation, Song Woo looks confident, and even though it is not going to be easy, Song Woo's hard work makes it look possible. Feeling adoration toward his junior, 
Jae-yum asks him if he can pat his head, and gives him the ultimatum of one minute. When Sang-woo doesn't say anything in reply, Jae-yum adds that if he hates the idea, he will not do it. Sang-woo says that he doesn't dislike the idea until he gets informed about it in advance. His statement surprises Jae-yum, who asks if he needs to mentally prepare himself for it. Sang-woo says that he dislikes everything if he isn't prepared for it in advance. Jae-yum only gets curious about that, as he asks what will happen if Sang-woo boils ramen and finds out that he has no ingredients. Sang-woo calmly replies that he will not have to face such a situation if he makes sure in advance that he has everything. Jae Young continues the conversation, saying that it looks like Sang-woo knows a lot about cooking ramen and should cook some for him as he is starving. Sang-woo replies that any sane person who knows how to read a recipe is aware of how to make ramen, but Jae Young still argues that some people are not good at it. Jae Young suddenly says that one minute has passed and raises his hand to pat Sang-woo on the head. He softly caresses his junior's head, thinking about how he wants to wrap an arm around his shoulder, but decides to just settle with head pats today. He then says to Song Wu that he will support him unconditionally until he achieves his dream. Where to get such a charming senior? His statement makes Song Wu nervous, who quickly swats his hand away and starts packing his bag. Jae Young is confused by why he is leaving half an hour earlier today. Song Wu says that he will meet him at the next meeting and then leaves the room. Once he is left alone, Jae Young starts thinking about whether he crossed the line with his junior, who starts shaking at the small touch. He still finds Sang-woo's reaction a little strange as he doesn't look like he's uncomfortable. 